to our Crafternoon Adventures. Welcome makers to another Crafternoon Adventure in my home studio. This is Colleen, master maker by the way. Welcome to my home studio in my dining room. Uh, once again, you may see a kitty cat or puppy dog running around, but we'll just say hello and hope they don't interrupt us too much. Uh, today's project is I want to paint a picture, but I have no idea how to paint, and I can't draw a picture if it had a handle on it. Um, so I'm going to show you an easy way to begin painting and learn how to blend colors and match colors to what you have in your mind. So we're going to get started. I'm going to cover my super cool tie-dye tablecloth so you don't want to get it wrecked. And today I'm using a square canvas because that's what I have. Uh, let's get situated here so everybody can see. I'm using a square canvas and I am not a fantastic artist but I know I have uh, potential. So what I did, I love chickens. I have chickens in my backyard and they're fun to watch and I like happy hands. So what I did is I went, uh, did a simple Google search for a happy cartoon hen and this is what I came up with. Printed it out on my home printer. Mine's just an inkjet, but you know, whatever and cut it out and we're going to learn how to embellish this simple cartoon chicken or whatever it is you want to do paint and turn it into a masterpiece okay so the first thing we need to do is decide where we want our chicken so we could do it the boring way and do it that do it like the traditional square i'm going to paint it on a diagonal because I think it's a little more interesting and will make for an interesting piece of artwork. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to paint our background. So take into account the colors that are on your chicken. Do you want it to be drastically different or similar? I am going with a similar look and I actually have a paint color that I like. I have, hope I have enough. This is called, that's not the one, I think it's Burnt Umber. That's Naples Yellow. Where's Burnt Umber? Yellow Ochre. Yellow Ochre is the name. So we are going to take some Yellow Ochre, squirt it on the palette. We're also going to take a little bit of brown. This is Burnt Under. Umber. Okay. I'm going to take really fat brush like this one and I'm going to use I'm just going to use the dry brush technique I'm not going to add any water to it and I am just going to paint it up if you find that your paint is a little thick go ahead add some water mix it in it'll spread faster and easier Alright, so once you've got this first layer for your background on, I'm going to add some streaks of brown to give the painting a little bit of dimension. I like to add interesting, uh, interesting subtle colors of texture to my paintings. Uh, don't be afraid, you don't have to blend it all the way in if it's a little thicker in parts or thinner in other parts. That works as well. So now that we have the main picture done, or the main base coat done, I'm going to add uh, a brown border. And it's just going to be the width of my paintbrush. I'm going to need a bit more brown. My paints are a little old, so they're kind of gooey. So I do need to add a little bit of water to 
bring them back to life a little bit. So I'm just blending in a little bit of water. And then I'm just going to paint a border. Just the width of the brush. Doesn't have to be straight. That adds another bit of interest to your painting. I am going to paint the sides, uh, the brown color as well. And again, you know, don't worry if you can or can't see brush strokes. I like to see them in my paintings. That's just my style. And we are going to continue this around all four corners. Okay, now we've finished up the border area. And it looks pretty good. Don't overwork it, trust me. If you start overworking something, it just makes a mess. So I'm going to use a hair dryer to dry this and we'll be back in a moment to continue on with our project. Alright, so now that our painting is dry or mostly dry, we're going to add our artwork. I'm adding the chicken. You can add whichever you choose uh, that you're happy with. I'm going to use a little bit of Mod Podge, Mod Podge, whatever you call it. And I'm going to put just a thin layer on the back of the picture because I want it to stick to the canvas. So we're just going to add a thin layer to our cartoon or painting or whatever it is you, you're choosing to do. Okay. And now we're going to position, oopsie, position our chicken. I, again, I'm positioning it on the diagonal and I don't like that. I want it to fit within the borders. Okay. And then add just a little bit more so it sticks down. Remember, this is just like a glue-like substance. I don't know what really it's made out of. We want our chicken to be flat, to become one with the canvas, essentially. Mod Podge does dry clear, so we won't have to worry about seeing any glue marks. You do want to try to get all the bubbles out underneath. If you don't, it's just going to add another dimension to your painting. You know me, I like dimension, I like texture. Anything that adds some uniqueness to the painting, I love. Okay, so I'm also using my fingers to make this paper stick. Sometimes you have to make people at artwork do things they don't really want to do. Alright, okay, just a little bit more. And again, this is just a way for you to learn different brush stroke techniques, how to blend uh, your paint colors to achieve the desired color that you're looking for. Alright, and that looks pretty good. There are a few bubbles in it. I'm not going to sweat the small stuff here. I am going to use a hair dryer and dry it up, so take a time out and dry your painting. All right, so now our, our chicken, printed out chicken, is dry and we're ready to uh, do some painting. Uh, now, I don't paint the whole chicken. I just leave half of it. I go half and half. I add some accents where I think I need them. So we're going to do some accents on the orange and the red and the feet and a little bit of the body. So it looks like we're going to use orange. 
some yellow. This color is deep yellow. Yellow, deep yellow. Let's see what color is this. Unbleached titanium, which is like an off, that looks like an off white. That's perfect. A bright white really wouldn't go with this color uh, painting. It doesn't fit in with the right tones, and we still have a little brown on our palette. So let's mix up a little bit of color. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet, and I'm going to take some of this orange, and I'm going to take some of this. Uh, off white and I'm going to kind of mix it together so it's not so brighty bright and I'm going to add some maybe it needs a little more to the ends of her wings and you can make this as close to the color of the chicken as you want or at least. I'm kind of blending a little bit of everything. I've had chickens and not everything is the same. I need a little bit of red. This is a crimson red. That might be a little too red red. But there's also a deep red. And this is just over years of buying paints that I have all these different colors. I'm also not rinsing out my brush in between. Why? Just because. They're all like the same orangey color. Don't be afraid to go out of the lines a little bit. But we add a little yellow ochre to add to the head. And again, I'm just adding a little bit of paint on the edges. We will take some red and that yellow ochre. fill in there. Maybe add a little bit of brown. You know, it's your chicken, your painting. You can give it whatever kind of colors you like. Alright, now I am going to rinse my brush. Off. Wipe it with a paper towel. And I'm going to take some of this off-whitish color. Fill in a little bit of the beak. Do some brushwork on the belly part of the chicken along the edges. You can even take a little bit of that yellow ochre, mix that in there. See how it's nicely blending together? Not perfectly. This isn't going to be a perfect picture. It's it's like a character. Oh dear. Okay, if you screw up like that. Wipe it off with a paper towel. I do not want that much brown. See, we all screw up and make mistakes, but you can't fix it. Alright, I'm going to go back and add some of the yellow ochre and off-white colors. Maybe a little bit of orange. Oop. Paint in the feet a little bit. You're saying to yourself, Colleen, this really doesn't look like much of anything. It looks like a sloppy painting. You know, you're just going to have to trust me on this. It might look like this now. But we are not finished with our chicken yet. So I am blending around, adding paint and texture. Not necessarily all smooth. Remember, I like that chipe choppy, thick, painted texture look. And let's add a little more. It needs a little oomph up on top here. Well, not like that. See, I'm just going around picking up colors that I think are going to go. Okay. Once again, we are going to let this dry. Uh, if you think you want some more I don't like that at all. See, we'll wipe that off. Need it to stand out a little bit. The 
afraid? Don't be afraid. It's just painting a picture. Really, if you don't like it, nobody ever has to see it. Okay, so now I'm going to dry this again and tell you what the next exciting step is. Okay, so our painting is like 95% it's dry. And what we're going to do now is you, you'll need an old toothbrush, something you're not using anymore. Toothbrushes are a great addition to Enti Painter's uh, toolkit. And I'm going to rub some of the brown paint onto my brush. And I am going to flick it to get little dots brown paint scattered across my chicken picture. Once again, it adds dimension, interest, and you know, see that one is a little gloppy, don't worry about that. It's going to make your perfect picture perfect in an imperfect sort of way. Uh, this does get messy. If you have an apron, I would put it on because you never know where these flicks of paint are going to go. And you can add as many speckles or as few speckles as you like, as you like it. Yes, it's messy. Once you're happy with it, stop flicking the paint. There is such a thing, believe it or not, too many speckles. Uh, you could also add another color in there if you wanted to. That's entirely up to you. I am leaving it as is and I'm going to get my hair dryer out and finish drying the picture. Okay, now that the picture is hopefully for you dry, mine is mostly dry, you're telling, saying to me, Colleen, this looks like a mess. This does not look like a piece of art. Well, hold on. We're going to use our friend Mr. Sharpie again. Uh, I'm using a black one. I wish I had brown because I'd use brown, but black is what I have. And this is a really fat one. I would probably not use this either, but once again, this is what I have. We are going to outline all the black marks on this picture to make things stand out a little more. And it doesn't have to be perfect because see I just screwed that up. That's okay. Uh, and just trace all the lines filling in. may need to wipe off your Sharpie if your painting is not completely dry. Okay, now that we've got it outlined, I'm going to actually sign my name or my initials like I always do. But wait, we're not finished yet. It still has sort of a dull, unfinished look to it. So we are going to take our friend, Mr. Uh, Mod Podge, Mod Podge, however you call it, give it a shake, and we are going to cover this entire painting with this glue. This will make it waterproof, it will make it shiny, and yes, it is going to give it that finished look that you have been waiting for. Remember, do nice even strokes. It does dry clear, so even if you have some funky looking strokes going on, don't worry. Do the sides. If you hang this outside, it will be waterproof. I mean, I wouldn't hang it in the direct area where it's going to get rained on. That'd be silly. 
but it will withstand the elements. It's also going to make sure that your printed chicken that was glued on there really stays down, doesn't come up. Don't touch the Mod Podge when it's wet. It will leave fingerprints. Now you're seeing that there are some lumps and bumps in there and I'm telling you that is perfectly okay. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. I like texture to my painting projects. I'm not a perfectionist. I don't even think I'd call myself a painter. But it looks rustic. It looks sort of country-like. And that's what I like about it. There's nothing in my life that's perfect. So why should my artwork be any different? And this is a generous layer Mod Podge, Mod Podge. Be afraid to add more to your palette. Smooth it over. And I know, now it really looks like a mess, doesn't it? Just trust me on this. Trust me. I've been a crafter a long time. I have figured out all the screw-ups so that you don't have to go through that. Nice long strokes. Okay, once you think you have it covered completely, thoroughly, to your liking, uh, you can let it dry. I'm going to get out my hair dryer again and give it a try. and there you have it. Uh, this project is mostly dry. Please, if you think you need another coat of Mod Podge, which I think I'm going to need, it feels a little still papery, go ahead, wait till it's completely dry, and add another layer of that glue protectorate so that you can hang it outside. And see, it's very cute now. That Mod Podge gave it a shiny look. There's lots of texture, there's lots of colors, and you've made a work of art that is really super cute. That you can hang. Uh, I'm gonna hang this out on my patio by where my chickens are, and uh, or else by where I have my other happy hen paintings. I have a lot of them around the house. So thanks for joining us. You've painted a picture, and you didn't even know how to paint or draw. Congratulations, well done. Thanks everyone. We hope you enjoyed today's craft. Most projects we demonstrate can be made in under an hour